but he might be trying to get it right here in the third. And the Knicks have the ball as we approach the one-minute mark. And Joe Mazzulla is going to pull the plug. We just got out tough the last two games. Um, we haven't played to our standard. A turn of physicality. The game has shifted a little bit, and it's going to shift even more in the playoffs. And we ain't meet the whistle for whatever reason. Um, it could be just because of of anticipation for the playoffs or, or whatever, but that's what I'll say. We're going to nip that in the bud, though. Jalen Brown, after the Celtics got destroyed by the Knicks last night. If you just looked at the final box score, you see 118-109, you're like, oh, they lost a game. They already wrapped up the number one seed in the NBA. They're how far clear of the other teams in the East, 13 of Milwaukee, 14 of New York who beat them last night but they trailed by 31 they got booed by the home crowd at one point some people like Jalen I feel like get it I feel like they understand that the team needs to right the ship and figure something out quickly while other players and we'll get to them uh, seem less concerned so where are you on this scale you can jump in on Jones and Mega with Arkan it's a Friday we're live in the Ford Clubhouse Fenway studio and we're taking you up to the Red Sox. Mercifully, they're finally done. Finally done with the Baltimore Orioles. Uh, they took them to extra innings last night, which I guess is progress. They get the Angels again tonight at Fenway, weather permitting. Uh, so, Mego, I don't know how you feel about the Celtics last night, but our big question of the day up now at Jones and Mego after back-to-back -back losses to Eastern Conference contenders, what's your concern level with the Celtics? High, medium, low, low. Zero. I think I know you, so I have a feeling I know where you're coming from, but where's your concern level? Okay, so I didn't love last night. It was pretty gross. The effort level, not from the bench, but from the starters, was extremely low. And I would say, though, my concern level is low. Is low. I can't say it's zero, Banner 18, because this team hasn't done it yet, so I'm always going to have just at least a sliver of doubt, no matter how good the team looks at different points. Um, I just... I look at the recent, I, I was doing this little exercise, and I know I'm not the first person to do this, but the recent champs, if you go back to their last 10 games, and the Celtics are 5-3 and three in their last eight, they have two more games to go. They see the Hornets tonight. They see the Wizards before they go into the playoffs. Uh, last year, the Nuggets were 5-5 five and five in their last 10 games. The Warriors were 5-5 five and five in their last 10 when they won in 22. And in 21, the Bucks were 6-4 and four in the last 10. So I think there's a lot of different reasons that you see this trend of why teams perform this way towards the end. But I don't I just don't think that they're really taking any part of these games seriously unless you're deep on the bench and trying to show yourself out for some minutes. They're not showing anything that they would do with Jalen Brunson in a playoff series. I, th I think they're not even running offensive sets for the most part at this time. So I understand why you could be like, worried about the mindset going into the playoffs and can they flip the switch and all of that and be ready to go but my concern level is really pretty low okay what do you think of Jalen after the game because he sounds a little concerned no yeah I mean I think so I also think some of that is like I, I think he's saying he's trying to say the right things and Jalen's trying to like oh yeah our standard is we're going to be competitive we're going to be tough and we're not meeting that standard right now and really I think if you like gave these guys you know some truth serum it would be we don't care about these games right now. We have nothing to play for other than our health, and we just need to get to the playoffs. Okay. That does seem to be how they're playing. Arkan, how'd you vote? High concern level, medium, low, or zero? I voted high. I'm concerned about this team, and I think that it's hard not to be. Uh, it, just looking at their history, looking at what this group has been. If this was real load management, if that's what you were seeing last night, if Tatum and Brown didn't play, if Porzingis didn't play, if Holiday and White didn't play, I'd say fine. All right, they're getting beat, whatever. No big deal. Even if those guys played... I don't know, half the minutes that they played. Tatum's averaging 35 minutes a game this year. He played 32 minutes last night. That was not load management. He was out there. If you're really concerned about injuries and things like that, don't play him so much. He was playing almost his normal uh, minute load. Same with Porzingis. Same with uh, Derek White. Jalen Brown was like three minutes less than usual. But still, I look at this and I don't like what I'm seeing. I didn't like it against the Bucks. I don't like it here against the Knicks. I didn't like it in those games against the Hawks. And in fairness, they had a great week in between that where they beat everybody that they played. But let's be honest here. That was the Thunder without Gilgis Alexander, uh, there was uh, the Pelicans without Ingram, and a bunch of bad teams. So I'm sorry, when they play a team that has something to go for, I'm not convinced this team's going to flip the switch in a couple weeks. They're not the flip switchers. 
or switch flippers. They're not switch flippers, and that's what I'm, I'm worried Brad about. Fo, Brad Fo knows what you meant. I have uh, I have a very high concern right now. So okay, but Arkan, just really quick, like the uh, flip we're, went switched. We're Thank talking you. about a situation where the rest of the Eastern Conference is like pretty unsettled. So everybody else there has something to play for. So yeah, of course these teams are the Bucks, the Knicks. They're playing with some desperation. Your your team just doesn't care. Yeah, you have nothing to play okay, for fine. other than staying healthy. Okay, fine. So they should be down thirty one. No. Okay. So I'm not. Like, I'm, I'm saying like I didn't love the like, product last if night. If there's yeah. nothing to play for, Tatum doesn't need to play thirty two minutes. I agree. I don't point. think he yeah. needs to. You I get, really don't. He did, and he sucked. I mean, they all kind of sucked last you night. You get out executed in the fourth quarter by a team that it matters more to because they're chasing the two seed. Uh, like, fine. They were down by thirty one, and so I just I wouldn't completely brush that aside. Uh, so Arkan is highly concerned. Mego, you have low concern. I'll give you my answer here in a moment. But real quick, let's do an exercise because I want to give Arkan, I think, a little bit of credit. Who's the scariest player in the Eastern Conference off the Celtics, Mego? Who's the scariest player in the East? Oh, no. Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler? Yes. I'll always be scared of Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler can be like 85 years old, and if he walks out on the court, I'll be like, oh, no. Arkan? Number 11 from Villanova. Jalen Brunson, scariest guy in the Eastern Conference right now, and I don't think it's really that close, honestly. I think he's right. Yeah. I think he's right, Mego. I don't want the he's heat. Been killing people. I don't want the heat. The heat still scare me because of that whole thing, and I've seen Butler elevate, and maybe I'll feel stupid if the Celtics get Miami in the first or second round or Eastern Conference final, <laughs> and it's Jimmy Butler. Maybe I'll feel stupid about it. It's Jalen Brunson. Now, who's that chicken noise for? For me, for the That's heat? That's for all of you. I hate okay, all of you. Okay, well, I'll, I'll embrace that, but the question, the question isn't like, you know, are, are the Knicks going to beat the Celtics? The question is, Ryan, if you want to weigh in, who's the scariest player in the East off the Celtics? Like, who should they be afraid of? Giannis. You, you can't say no one. Okay, Giannis, Giannis. injured Giannis. Oh, Dame yeah. is another one. I'm not afraid. Dame scares me. I'm not afraid. No, I gave the right. It's so Giannis. not afraid of the Bucks. It's not even fun. I'm afraid of Dame individually. Brunson this month is averaging 36 points a game. Like, he's ridiculous right now. So, we have one Giannis, one Butler, two Brunson. I I'm giving I'm giving Arkan credit. Arkan is take committed. That's what this is. He started this take last year, and he's okay. married to it. Okay, maybe. Right? Well, it's true now. Yeah, maybe he was ahead of the curve on it. Like, that's why I want to give him credit. I think Arkan, we mocked him merciful, uh, mercilessly for saying Jalen Brunson was the scariest player in the East. Arkan, you wrote this today. They couldn't They couldn't cover him last night. No. They couldn't guard him. And they put everybody on him. Jalen Brown was on him. Jason Tatum was on him. Derek White was on him. Porzingis was on him. He scored on everybody. He was giving it to anybody who was in front of him. And that's something that I don't – I'm sorry. Like, if you're talking about a playoff series, that's the best player on that team. He's going to be going that hard in the playoffs too. At some point, don't you think one of them looks at each other and says, hey – this guy's killing us. Someone get out there and defend him. No one could. That's I'm sorry. That's more than just oh we're not we're taking it easy here because we already clinched the uh, the one seed. That's a guy embarrassing you on your home floor and no one had any answers for him. Okay. Do you think there's just any, like Dejounte Murray? Do you think there's any chance that they're holding their cards close to the vest though? That what they would do on Jalen Brunson, they're not going to show on a random night that doesn't have. So instead, what they just let him score thirty nine yeah, points. Yeah. Exactly. Like, so, them. like, what are you going to do? I mean, what are you what are you going to do differently? I mean, Jalen was on him. Arkan's right. They threw different guys at him. Like, what are you going to do differently? I'm it's just not, saying, do you allow college. for the possibility instead of looking at it and saying, "Wow, all of a sudden Jalen Brunson is the most dangerous player in the entire Eastern Conference"? Yeah, it's not all of a sudden. This whole month, he's been awesome. He's Ryan, been very, very good lately. Ryan, just because I'm not uh, logged in and yep. I, I got to double authenticate and everything else, can you give me some MVP odds? Like Jalen Brunson is uh, probably just outside the top five in MVP odds. Like, it's not a crazy I thing. I doubt that, but I'm going to double check for you. Know, he's just outside I the top five? No. I think he is. Okay, I'm pretty sure that he is. Is he top is. ten? I'm checking it like, right. We're talking about a guy who, in terms of MVP, I thought was All right, certainly the in the top MVP ten. MVP ladder just got updated two hours ago, and here's what it is. Jokic number one, SGA two, Doncic three, uh, Giannis four, Tatum five, and Ed just popped up. And then it's DeMontis Sabonis, Anthony Edwards, Jalen Brunson. I number can't eight. wait for Jones to do... The Nordic side. Uh, I was hoping you forgot about that. Uh, we'll get to your phone, we'll get to your phone calls. I'm grinning ear to ear. We'll get to your phone calls. 617-779-7937. Jalen Brunson, is he the scariest player in the East? He tore up the Celtics last night. And I just, fine, they're not going all out. Effort thing, fine. But scheme-wise, scheme-wise, what are they going to do differently on Jalen Brunson? They had their whole team out there. They're going to have to step up their effort. So to answer the question that I've avoided to this point in our big question of the day, what's my concern level with the Celtics? High, medium, low, or zero? Do I love what I've seen the last two games? Of course not. I don't want them losing to the Bucs. I don't want them shooting zero free throws. I don't want them attempting 50-plus threes and then crying about it after the game. I certainly don't want them down 31 at home against the Knicks with their whole team on the floor. Do I like any of it? No. Would my preference be they won? Of course. I have zero concern with this team. <laughs> zero. Hashtag Banner18. No one in this league can touch them. 
No one outside of maybe Denver, no one can touch them. And so I am not concerned about them losing a seven-game series to Jalen Brunson and the Knicks or to uh, certainly Giannis and Lillard and the Bucks. Never mind Miami, who is the scariest team in the East. Brunson's the scariest player in the East. The Celtics aren't losing to those teams. So I have zero concern about this team. They start doing that in the first round against Atlanta or, heaven forbid, Miami or someone like that. Come talk to me. I'll say I overlooked it. I whistled past the graveyard. In the meantime, I feel the same way about this team. I don't like that they're checked out. I don't like that they're bored, but that's what it is. And we'll see if they can turn it back on because Arkan's right. They have not been able to flip that switch in the past. I agree. They're checked out. They're bored. I don't think that they're running some of the schemes that they would, the sets that they would in the um, postseason. But I also am wondering, like, this is where I get a little irritated with that is that, okay, do you remember it was just, what, two weeks ago in the two back-to-back Atlanta losses? Yep. When Joe Mazzullo was telling us that the reason that Porzingis was just getting torched on the perimeter... They were working on stuff. ...was because they were trying out stuff in games? Well, like, what happened to that? Like, I do wonder... They haven't, they haven't solidified their late-game execution, for example. Like, I feel like if they're in clutch time, I still have no idea what is going to happen with this team. Like, I have no idea where the ball is going. I have no idea if Tatum can finally make that shot. I don't know. And so I would like to see them, on the one hand, like, use some of these games as opportunities to try to work that stuff out so they're not working it out in, like, the second round of the playoffs because that will be riskier and more irritating to me. Uh, Ryan just sent the odds on Jalen Brunson, which is why I'm trying Where is to he? Where, where are the odds? I agree with you, Mego. Okay, but it, there's only they only have odds for three players. Oh, but I'm just so they they're not aware how scary Jalen Brunson is. Jokic is minus ten. Your guy, Gian, your guy Giannis isn't on the list either. No, but I'm not there. saying he's an MVP. I'm not I'm saying not that saying, at all. You guys, are, all of a sudden Jalen Brunson five, just Brian. just crashed Brian. through a wall and ended up Brian, in an no MVP one, race. No one said he was MVP. I just said he was top ten, which Arkan backed up with the MVP ladder and knocking on the door just outside the top five. Jalen Brunson has never been an MVP consideration. At least Giannis was at one point this year. Okay. Uh, are you saying because he's outside the top five, he was never a real MVP candidate? Because he was no. close to the top five. He was closer than Jalen Brunson, which is why I think he is far more uh, scary than, than Jalen Brunson is. He's honest. also hurt. And I, I just, no, I'm not afraid of the Bucks. Uh, they have Doc. I don't care. I'm not afraid of the Bucks. I'm not afraid of uh, Giannis. I would be afraid of Lillard if he wasn't being coached by Doc Rivers. <laughs> Jalen Brunson, scariest player in the East. But guess what? No one's scary. I have zero concern with the Celtics. Uh, how'd you guys vote? 617-779-7937. You can weigh in there on the phones or at Jones and Mego. Your concern level with the Celtics. Let me read you a couple of items here before we get to some phone calls. Uh, Dan Shaughnessy in today's Boston Globe. Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum have the fame, money, and accolades that NBA stars covet. They're two of the greatest players in the history of the league's most storied franchise, but until they win a championship, they're not whole Celtics. Oh, yeah, that's right. They don't go up on the ceiling with Cowens. <laughs> the ceiling? I thought we called it the ba- the rafters. Uh, they don't go up on the ceiling with Cowens, Russell, the Coos, Satch, Sam, Casey, Larry, and Max. Max. Until they put a banner up there like all of the above. Without a championship, they might as well be a couple of Antoine Walkers. I love that line. Dan Shaughnessy, Boston Globe. Maybe like a few random names like, I don't know, Max aside. How do we feel about that take by Shaughnessy? Because I don't know how you could disagree with it. I totally love it. I think it's like um, the grandfather of the take that I had last week, which is the fear that I do think a lot of Celtics fans, Arkan included, have when they look at Jason Tatum and they say, is he going to be Larry Bird or is he more like Paul Pierce? Is it going to take years and years and years from now? Not the years we've been through. Years in the future and a different supporting cast around him by, for him to finally win a championship. Or is now he Bird closer, had like three. Is he closer to Bird where he'll, where he'll win when he's still quite young? Uh, how many did Bird have by now? One, two. Bird had, Bird had certainly two rings by this point in Tatum's career. Look, I, I'd sign off on Pierce right now. If you asked me a couple of years ago, if, is Tatum going to win multiple championships, I would have said yes. You know, now I You don't I wa- feel that way now? You just said that you, you banner 18, that yeah. you have no fear for this yeah, team. Yeah, but I just, I'll take, I think a lot of fans would take the one is the point. I think a lot of fans would take the one. He had two at age 27. Okay, exactly. And I, I guess I was going by years in the league, right? Yeah, so he, I think so he, it's three by years in the league. So he had, uh, he had two by now. So he's already not Bird. Like, I mean, he's not going to be Larry Bird. So I, I'd hope for Pierce. But I don't disagree with Shaughnessy. Like, until these guys win... 
they're not great all-time Celtics. They're closer to Antoine Walker than they are even guys like Pierce, never mind Larry Bird or Bill Russell. Yeah, and that's why my concern's partially so high, is that this isn't a team that's done it before. This isn't a team that can just walk into the playoffs, flip the switch, and do what they do, like LeBron's Heat or the Cavs or those other two, the Lakers, you know, these other teams that have been there and sort of understand what it's like, the Warriors, uh, not this year's Warriors, but in the past. And I think that that's a big issue. It's a big difference. You look at that, and I think that these two guys have shown that they're great players, as Shaughnessy pointed out. But they do come up short, and they come up short. It's not like the team around them lets them down. They come up short. Tatum came up short against Golden State. Brown has had huge problems with yep. turnovers and free throws and all these things. And those guys were playing in all those games I just mentioned, too, by the way. Both Atlanta games, the Knicks game, and the Bucks game. You had both of those guys playing, and that's why I'm concerned. Okay, you can weigh in. 617-779-7937. One more item here. New York Post, Arcan, you drop this in. <laughs> <laughs> this is the funniest story I've read in a while. I love the New York Post so much. Okay. Uh, if it felt eerily familiar for you to go back to New York, uh, it should have. Uh, or back in New York, rather. It should have. Because like New York sports porn for these people. It sure way. felt an awful lot like the evening of December 29th, 2007, a night where the undefeated Patriots visited Giants Stadium with little tangible merit on the line for either team. Arkan, where were you that night? Um, that night I was at a friend's house in Colorado and I punched the hole in the kitchen wall. And no, 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 not, no, not the Super Bowl, the regular season game. Oh, the regular season game. I don't December, remember where I was. December 29th, 2007. Yeah, Randy, Brady DeMoss, 50 the, touchdowns. Uh, what are you talking about? I don't remember where I was for that. Game. Grand Canal. I, I was, was at a friend's I was at Grand Canal. That place was a zoo. It was awesome. It was, it was, uh, it's right up there, slightly above my wedding and the birth of Lucas. It was, it was way up there in terms of great moments. Great night. Tremendous night. Uh, so they, they beat the Giants, but the Giants learn something about themselves right. is the point in the New York Post. Patriots played their guys. Celtics played their guys last night. In this case, the Knicks won going away. In that one, they kept it close against an all-time great team. Mego, you're scoffing. I'm not scoffing. I'm laughing. Like, I, first of all, I love this. Feels I love like a this. scoff. I think it's, who wrote it? Mike Vaccaro? He's, a, he's like a longtime columnist at the New York Post. But I think it's so ridiculous because it's not even comparable. Like, it, of course. So, if so you, you are scoffing. If you played that game seven times, how many times do the Patriots win it? That what, Super Bowl 42? Super Bowl game, yeah. Six? Yeah. So, like, okay, if we're talking on. about a seven-game series, who has any fear of the Knicks against the Celtics? Okay, but I'm just saying, I don't, I don't think the Patriots, it's not like it's not like the Giants beat them one out of 100 times. The Giants beat them pretty close to 50% no, of the time. I, I just asked you, yeah. like, what, what do you think the series would be? And so I'm looking at this, and I'm going, I have no fear with this. Like, I really don't. I'm not afraid of New York, especially with Julius Randle out. Like, I, don't, I just don't think that they're a real threat. But I would love to see the series because the Boston-New York thing, it's just always fascinating and a great time. Eastern Conference Final would be great. Arkan, you put any stock in that? Um, not so much in the Knicks, but in the Celtics-Patriots comparison, yes, absolutely. I think that there's a big comparison you can make there. It's a super team. They've dominated the entire regular season. And the big difference is that uh, Tom Brady won three Super Bowls before then, and the only thing this group's done is choke in the Conference Finals and won NBA Finals too. So that's probably the biggest difference. But I do think there's a lot of 07 similarities here that you can't really ignore. Yeah, I mean, the difference is that was an all-time Patriots team that you're right already knew how to win uh, or an all-time you know team we thought at the time in real time this is just another good yeah. nba team i don't really think they're similar at all to okay be honest. so you scoff i do scoff well i laugh it's beyond scoffing it's laughing out loud lol -ing. uh you know who else would probably laugh at it uh, a couple of guys on the celtics who unlike Jalen brown don't seem bothered at all by what's going on with the celtics is jason tatum ever bothered by anything let me hear tatum after the game he's last bothered night. by the refs it's one game um we lost two in a row uh, doesn't define who we are. Right? We've had a great season thus far, and a great job of managing uh, the season. I right? play 82 games. We've we've had a bad three three days, uh, but overall, best record in the league. We 15 games ahead of second place. Uh, we're not perfect, but you know we can learn from from these, and uh, it is a a tough position to be in, but uh, we asked for it, so, you know, we do got to be better. Okay, he went and saved himself a little bit at the end, but largely not concerned, and Mego, fair point, the refs bother him for sure. That's something that bothers him, uh, as SVG pointed out last night. Uh, but in general... Tatum sounds like Dan Duquette there, by the way. More games in first place than no, I, other team. You know who he sounds like? He sounds like Monty. This is what Monty's been yeah, doing with the like Bruins. Monty too, yeah. Monty's been doing this for weeks with the Bruins. Like, oh, we got a lot of points, we're fine. Okay. 
Uh, meanwhile, poor, I think I I think I hate listening to Porzingis after the games. I can't wait till they lose a big playoff game, and I got to listen to this guy be like, "Oh, it's no big deal." Here's Porzingis. Maybe we'll get our ass kicked again one more time. And start the series. Who knows? And then we're then it's a wake up call for us. Cool. But most likely, if I had to bet, I would say we'll show up at the level that we need to show up. It's on us, and and yeah, I don't I don't think it's a habit for us. I think I hate listening to him. Uh, honestly, yeah, join the club, Jones. Now, now you know how we feel. Um, but I, I just, I hate listening to him after these losses. Nothing bothers Porzingis. Nothing bothers Tatum outside of the rest. Well, first of all, I do think that like Porzingis is just the happiest he's ever been because this is the easiest it's ever been for him. He's so not in DC like, anymore. I don't. I actually don't think he's like being a total fraud with that stuff. But I, I agree, like, the, oh, we're going to get punched in the face again. I love it. It's good for us. Uh, like, it does get tired. It might as well be Sam Kennedy saying you love people talking trash to you and Dunkin' Donuts. Like, it's just, it's just, could you stop with that over and over and over again, Porzingis? Yeah, and also, I mean, what, you're bored? Bored of what? What is Porzingis? Oh, yeah, maybe that'll happen. Like, what if you ever won that you can say, oh, yeah, it's great. Let's go out there and get punched in the mouth in the Seriously. first round of the playoffs again. Like, what are you talking about? Right. You've had a good regular season. The Celtics have had other good regular seasons. They choke in the playoffs. This is this is very concerning. The fact that they can just sort of be bored and float through the end of the season and act like it's no big deal, and then in a week it's like, all right, guys, let's get back to where we were two weeks ago, back when we actually cared about all this. Meanwhile, the Knicks and all these other teams are playing full steam ahead the whole time. Because That's they have very dangerous. to play for. Yes, but they're still going to be playing that way. Like, you don't, just, yeah. you don't just flip the switch, I don't think. Teams are going to have things to play for in the postseason. Right. And I know the Celtics yeah, will, too. Yeah, everyone has something to play for Okay, in the well, I'm just saying, other, those other teams... The other teams aren't taking a two-week break. They've ratcheted it up. And Arkin, and I agree. Tatum, and especially Porzingis and guys like that, you're not LeBron. You're not Steph Curry. So this is an optics thing for me. I just don't like the way they're handling it because I have zero concern. But I'm not on the team, and I'm not out there facing the media after the game, and I'm not the one who has to deal with the blowback if they screw it up. Oh, well, I got a bad prediction. You guys are going to need to live with it. And I wish they took it a little more seriously. But for me, zero concern. Mego, low concern. Arcan terrified. You can vote. At Jones and Mego, after back-to-back -back, uh, losses to the Bucks and the Knicks, what's your concern level with the Celtics? Uh, we'll get two today. Triple play. At 4.45, we have Meg Splaining at 5.30 and Bet Roulette. Picks for the weekend at 5.45. Stay tuned. Arcan with all the latest in trending. And seems like the national media is closer to Arcan than they are with me and Meg. We'll explain next.